Let's make it count. I must practice stories. Next, GSL Season 2. Renaissance. Mountain Dew GSL Season 2, Codex Renaissance. What's up, everybody? We are finally back after a, actually not finally, it was a short break here from StarCraft 2. That was too. the longest <laughs> break ever. It felt like forever. It's good to be back. We had a little bit of KSL in between the round of 32 and the round of 16, and now we're back uh, to get things moving. So 10 days isn't a very long break for you from StarCraft II. That's good to know, <laughs> Tasis. Good I? to see where your priorities lie. <laughs> oh, God. Thank God, finally, the round of 16 is here. Yes. I wish we could just do all of it in the next four days, but we got StarCraft One in there, too. So That's right. Uh, I guess we just got to put up with what we got. So... Look, we have some very interesting groups here. Uh, the racial distribution, despite this being uh, well, half the players um, in the round of 16 are Protoss, we have them slotted evenly in each of the groups. Yeah, it gives us the ultimate potential for either no Protosses to get through or, or only Protosses. the tournament's ruined. I was talking we to the producer to... about possibly canceling the season <laughs> if it's eight Protoss in the round of eight. You know, we've had situations where it looks like it could have gotten like this, or, you know, it could have gotten to that point. Uh, and usually we manage to get a pretty even distribution anyways in the final four, but let's watch for that. The Protoss is dominated in the round of six, uh, sorry, in the round of 32, and we may have that situation here in the round of 16. It's possible. Mm -hmm. we'll, have to, we'll have to see how these guys all play. I mean, the, the meta is continuing to evolve. I think a lot of players were caught off guard by the strength of those Protoss players before, but yeah. that doesn't mean it'll happen still. Uh, an exciting season, though. Very fun and funny group selection occurred. And we, are, by the way, are adding two of the new ladder maps yes. uh, to our pool. Um, this is this is exciting because, what is it? I think tomorrow, actually, the patch comes out that gives us the new season. Anyways, Thunderbird. <laughs> this map yeah, features <laughs> reduced mineral fields, allowing workers to clear them with one trip. And reduced mineral fields, minerals fields, can be mined to unlock additional expansions or attack paths. Also, the central area of Thunderbird has a rich Vespine geyser that allows gas extraction twice as fast, allowing you to use a variety of strategies with the use of reduced mineral fields. So there's a lot of ideas that um, are going to make this map a lot more complex and some you know, strategies and um, techniques that can be used here that I think we'll, we will have never seen before. Again, it's a very new map, so we're going to still be Unpacking it, whether you're playing on the ladder or you're watching your GSL, this is going to be fun to learn. Mm -hmm. um, we'll have more to say about this as we go into the game. Uh, yeah. For some reason, thematically, our new maps also have the names of, uh, I don't know, like uh, you know, a motorcycle from the 80s or something. Or uh, <laughs> Well, the first thing I think of with this one, which, by the way, I do want to just mention that with yeah. these minerals and everything, it's really cool. Both of the maps that we're adding yeah. remind me of like StarCraft 1 maps in a way where they're, they're getting... What about Destination? Oh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> I'm like, well, no, they don't remind me of Destination, but like, uh, they, they remind me of StarCraft 1 maps, you know? Yeah. It's like we got mineral fields to, to go through and open up locations on the map, and that's 
It's something that has been uh, not really used in StarCraft II very much. This was a mechanic as a new way to open and close routes. I think you know, StarCraft II, um, especially when it first came out, really emphasized the idea of destructible rocks. I mean, granted, we have that on all the maps now, but really this was kind of revolutionary at the time as a feature of the map where you could you know, destroy a location, mm -hmm. uh, either closing it off or opening it up. Sure. Excuse me, but... Now with the mineral patches, you have to use a worker. A lot of times early on, it's a big deal to send out an additional worker. So to try to open up a path, maybe get a different rush distance, all this stuff is going to be really fun to unpack here. Uh, our next map is Turbo Cruise 84. Yes, Turbo Cruise 84 features inhibitor zone generators that slow all units in its area of effect in this small map. Rows of these inhibitor zone generators make the initial rush distance longer. The terrain on which the inhibitor zone generators is located can also be used to better defend. For and this reason, a player who chooses an attack must carefully select the attack route. So I, I think these changes on these maps is exactly what StarCraft II needs. You know, the way that you keep an RTS alive and healthy and constantly changing is to make major adjustments on the map, to make new features on the map, which might, I think, uh, not even might, most certainly will offer new play styles here. So this yeah. is going to be very yeah. fun to cast. Uh, and it's exciting to be right here at the start of this so we can see the players maybe make some strategies that really uh, either blow our minds or maybe don't work at all. That's kind of the fun part about when we introduce something very new as, in a, as a mechanic in an RTS yeah. is to watch and get learned by the best in the world. We don't know. This map might turn out to be just hot trash, but yeah, I'm we excited don't about it because this is like, it's, it's such an interesting way. I, I think as you explained, said it as, this is a way to make the middle of the map longer, <laughs> you know? Sure. Uh, it's it's a really cool idea. Those slowing green orb thingies. Uh, will we see many people going through there? It obviously makes ranged units much more powerful and melee units much weaker. Right. Uh, it doesn't affect the firing rate, right? Just movement rate. So, yeah, I, I, I think that this is super interesting. What a great couple maps for us to try out. Now, I just hope they don't get vetoed all the time. I have a I think there's a very though. high chance that a lot of them are vetoed. We'll see, though. Um, but in this phase of the tournament, yeah, I would. It's kind of weird because we did intro them, but you're right. There's a high chance that uh, yeah. with rounds this limited, we might not see it until more of the round of eight. Well, regardless of that, here are our groups. As you see, eight Protoss spread out, four Terran spread out, four Zerg spread out. Uh, we'll just be doing it on Wednesday and Saturday these next two weeks and see who goes up. Some really awesome groups here. Yeah, you can definitely see in both Group B and Group D, those are very tough groups to call. A lot of heavyweights in those. Uh, yeah, that Group D is just silly. That's yeah. so silly. Um, we got like three round of four players in innovation. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a and C, obviously a lot of good players in there as well. Um, especially with how Special's been performing lately. It's very exciting oh, to see yeah. him. Yeah. Um, I'm curious to see how he's going to do as our non-Korean hope now. Yeah, I'm excited about that as well. He played very well at WCS, obviously. I uh, just lost to Sarah there at the end. Uh, we're gonna have a quick video, then we're gonna start our matches. Oh,我们国民的，三名中都参加过，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，对，
어 그럴 수도 있겠죠. 근데 제가 계획을 들어봤는데 야. 너무 완벽해요. 아 계획이 어? 완벽해요? 어. 네, 제가 오기 전에 그렸던 그림이에요. 그냥 서로 행복한 조가 될수 있을 네. 것 같아요. 아니, 이제 갖다 주면 된것 같죠? 네. 뭐야 네. 이렇게 하면 나쁘지 않잖아요. 아 근데 뭐 처음부터 예상을 좀 하고 있었어가지고 네. 네, 뭐 괜찮을 것 같고 오. 조의 투토스라는 게좀 마음에 안 들긴 하지만 음. 그래도 오. 뭐 열심히 하면 오. 한 토스가 그, 그, 이미 두고. 가면 남기용은 남기용은 우리 세트예요. 네, 저희는 세트예요. 아, 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 그래요. 어 저는 솔직히 이렇게 될줄 몰랐어요. 좀 되게 제 생각대로 안될줄 알았는데 네. 그냥 뭐 가만히 있다 보니까 또 알아서 이렇게 돼가지고 저도 명훈이 형이랑 생각이 비슷해요. 와, 셋이 손잡고 와도 되겠네. 어쩌네. 만약 그런 마음이라면. 네, 형, 남경 선수 가능하죠. 손잡고 그대로 와도 문제가 네. 없을 정도로. 아, 저도 뭔가 어쨌든 투토스잖아요, 지금. 네. 이용이 오면 은 그래서 100%는 마음에 들진 않거든요. 네. 가지고 어? 뭐 어윤수 선수를 데려와도. 어, 어윤수. 어윤수 방금 손 들었거든요. 어, 사실 명훈이 형이 말로는 뭐 저를 힘들어 한다고 하지만 코스만은 아닐 코스만큼은 아닐 거라고 생각하고 있습니다. 네. 뭐 그런 거 생각하면은 저도 나쁘지 않을 것 같아요. 어. 그 조명 선수 안 들어요. 네. <웃음> 이야기 아예 안 들었어요. 조명 선수, 저 어윤 선수가 자기를 뽑으면은 나쁘지 않을 것 같아요. 별로 하고 싶지 않아요, 제가. 하고 와. 싶지 않아요. 그럼 어윤 수는 어, 뭐가 어윤수, 되나요? 어윤 수는 비교가 되나요? 왜 물어봤어요? 누구 데려가네? 어, 김대엽이야, 진짜? 그냥, 그냥 예상대로. 아. 와 그냥 남경 선수를 그냥 데려가네요. 아니 김도우 선수 총 만족스러워서 뭐 지명권 뭐안 써도 되는 거 아닙니까? 예 제가 처음에 생각했던 조가 딱 이건데 예. 어. 너무 완벽하게 돼가지고 너무 완벽해요? 예 너무 행복하네요 지금. 최종 선택이 이제 마무리가 되었습니다. 오늘 최고의 조지명식으로 마무리 짓게 된 김도우 선수가 지금 원하는 대로 지금 마무리가 되었습니다. Round of 16. All right, we're ready to start um, our best of threes. That's, Let's get into this. It's pretty funny that uh, Classic says what the three weakest players are and then just gets them in his group. <laughs> <laughs> I know. He's a monster, man. I'll tell you what, man. Classic has been killing it this year. Uh, and he had a pretty strong showing last year as well. He's yeah. had some ups and downs for sure. Uh, he's really been going at it since about 2016 here. But uh, you know, th the way he's been able to um, just bring it this year specifically is really exciting. He is, uh, he's gone full Hungry Hungry Hippos with those WCS points, Artosis. Yeah, yeah, he's he's leading Korea three GSL tournaments in a row. Yeah. Counting two Super Tournaments, one of which was last year, uh, where he was in the finals. Uh, he's he's looking ridiculous. He looks like the best Protoss in the world, for sure. Uh, now, does he get out of this group? I think so. I think I, that this is going to be a deep, deep season for class. I am, for a finals. Yeah, almost certain he will advance here. Uh, granted, we've had plenty of upsets before with uh, great players, but well, no, I mean, come on, he's supposed to get out, right? Uh, yeah, he should, but I think there is upset potential, and I don't think it comes from fantasy. I think it comes from the other two. I think you might be right about that as well, Artosis. Ragnarok is in very good shape. Yeah, he's, he's playing better and better, just like Hurricane, who's in very good shape and is playing better and better, so. I also think we've seen a lot of new confidence here with Ragnarok mm -hmm. that we didn't quite have before. Uh, his play is looking uh, excellent. It's looking brilliant. There's nothing sure. cheeky or sneaky about it. Um, and, you know, for him to get to this phase of the tournament and the, and the group phase, he looked uh, like he was having a good time. He looked very okay in his own skin. I know a lot of pros have to sometimes get over that weird hurdle of, you know, discomfort with, like, group selections, you know, being interviewed, having to show your personality. Sure. Um, and it takes uh, some players longer than others just to get used to playing in front of big groups. But with time, that will fix all including any of that discomfort you have um, trying to perform, you know, performance anxiety interfering yeah. with your, uh, your play. <laughs> so no new maps. Oh, look at the vetoes now. Yeah. <laughs> we have Cobalt, Turbo Cruise, and Thunderbird all yeah. in there. Okay. It's like really going to be funny. There's like going to be one quote real veto each, <laughs> each time. <laughs> God, I hate pro gamers. <laughs>
All right, back to the maps we were using all along. Let's go. Game one's ready. I got a lot to say, Tasteless. More to say than I can say before this yeah. voice intro. Yeah. Makers Classic. Actually, no, that's all I had to say. <laughs> Size Storm Gaming, Ragnarok. Okay, I want to, I want to throw this out there. Yep. We should start doing the map pools like ASL does, or like reward tournaments do in general, where you just have four maps. Yeah. Okay. And we have one map randomly inserted at the start in some cases. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, absolutely. And the thing, it, it, like, you know how in the old days, if you had a kid with asthma you would like send him into the wilderness like his uncle who was a fur trapper or something it's like well either get better or die right? yeah yeah that's like an old thing we need to do that to some of these these map vetoing cowardly pro bags. gamers in starcraft 2 okay <laughs> you see back because we just put the maps in and there's going to be a lot of people that would want to learn but oh well i want to watch Damn. the new map so badly that's a sick ragnarok that drawing, by the way that's really good you should bring that sign to ksl tomorrow you'll win something yeah yeah for we sure. <laughs> We give away prizes at KSL based off sign skill. Yeah. Here it's all about RNG. You just yeah. have to win the drawing at That's the end. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Here it's all about vetoing maps, too. Pants from around the world. Thank you for coming down. My god, Jesus. But seriously, I'm so sad that we're going to see one one oh. map veto. That was as close as it could ever possibly be for a probe to, to block a drone and then not get it. Well, imagine if it was one of those you know, sci-fi things where suddenly, like, you're teleported, but you're partially in a wall, and you're just screaming until you <laughs> die. You know or it's I mean? a game from 1998 where instead it just gets stuck there forever in the yeah. side of the hatchery. Yeah. You're talking about StarCraft 1, I can tell. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, so Robo oh, coming Robo. up. That should not surprise anyone too much. Uh, really, the Immortal Century play is all the rage. And yeah. I, I mean rage in every meaning of rage. Like Zerg players experiencing emotional yes. rage when they yes. lose to it. Rage is a trend. Okay, so sentries on the way. This, I'm, you know, uh, uh, no regret, and I did a gigantic episode of in depth on immortal sentry pushes. Yep. Uh, and we went over all the GSL season one replays uh, containing them and found all sorts of cool and neat and interesting things about it. Um, and the the thing that's really hard about these pushes is you just don't know when they're going to move out. They they move out at zero mortals to five immortals. That's your range. And <laughs> yeah, there's, there's so many different iterations of this build and ways to make it kind of top heavy in certain aspects d during the push, um, putting over emphasis on certain units or a certain type of upgrade and utilizing that. And you know the burden really is on the Zerg to be absolutely, completely, and totally prepared, or you're just out. Yeah, it can be very tough. Now, seeing these sentries in the prism, Ragnarok knows completely what's occurring. So let's take a look at what he thinks is the right thing to do. He throws down a Rotorn very quickly. Obviously, you need a Rotorn. That was sick. You see that cancel? Yeah. That was really cool. That was cool. So he cancels the gas there to make it a little bit more misleading what uh, type of, of, of timing attack this is going to be. And he's going to be doing it off of just two gases. A lot of times, the Zergs will be checking. You can see the, the Ling uh, has not been able to yeah. get close enough to see that there's no Assimilator there. So uh, this may throw Ragnarok off a little bit. Yeah, it, it definitely could. He does not know uh, for certain where this is at right now. <laughs> Excuse me. Now, this should be a couple of adepts in here. Do you have yeah. the hiccups? Uh, was that that was like a single hiccup. Okay. I don't have the hiccups, but that I, was a hiccup. I thought we've cast it for a long time. I, I figure eventually one of us would have the hiccups in a cast, but I thought I could get really excited and you could sound like a, uh, I, I a, once, a, a an old school town drunk. I <laughs> once cast. did a cast with Kaldor where I couldn't stop coughing. Oh, really? I couldn't stop. And on the commercial, he's like, you need to drink water or something. So I started <laughs> drinking water and it actually helped quite a bit. <laughs> but it was like just constant coughs. I was like, no help. I made the cast so much worse. <laughs> Anyways, the push is coming. It's a two immortal push. Very, very strong. 
Uh, right now, Ragnarok's sitting on 47 workers. He's going into Ling's. Plenty of Ravagers being made. Definitely the right type of way to go about this. His creep spread looking pretty decent. Got to be careful, though. When he gets up to a choke, this is where it's going to be a little bit harder to engage. Okay, we have a split on the queens. Oh, God. Okay, one eye queen isolated over there at the top. The links come in. Some force oh fields do go down. Uh, missing the vials over yeah. there on that immortal. Really beautiful Link surround. And his prism is so far away that he's already lost an immortal here. Yeah. This push here's doesn't thing. look like it's going to work. You don't think so? I think he might be able to get in here. I mean, see, the thing is, a lot of these guys were losing their uh, war prism due to the corrosive well, vials. I, no, I think I no, think yeah. Ragnarok's already held, to be honest. Like, he just engaged that really perfectly. He had a nice split. Uh, when the queens were on the side, I was nervous for a moment, but this was a beautiful hold from Ragnarok. Yeah, you know what? I, I'm so used to seeing uh, when Deer did this, he would have it far away enough that he get the, the, the warp ins there and not lose it because uh, especially early on this year, we saw a lot of timing attacks just stopped yeah. because the Warp Prism was shot down. But that rush was completely shut down, and I don't see any real opportunity for Classic to try to tech out of this. He is going to get his two other gases, but a third base is going to be very tough with the amount of uh, Zerg on the map right now. Yeah, this is, uh, man, that, that was just such a beautiful hold. You know, uh, Ragnarok, I, I just, I tip my hat to him. You see the Zergs are definitely already getting much better against these Immortal pushes, but his Creep Spreaders out, these are like all the things that uh, No Regret and I have been talking about that you need to do, right? Creep Spread out, don't drone too high. We saw a lot of links. That flank was beautiful. The Queens being on the other side, you know, uh, Classic just getting mowed down there. Now, how do you come back in this situation? It's going to be tough. Yeah. You see a little unload over here. He's just trying to fight these roaches. This is not going to be enough. No, it's not. I, I feel like this should be an easy deflection here from uh, Ragnarok, and then you just yeah. you just run him over, right? I mean, there's yeah. not much more, I think, to this game. Well, Let's see what Classic can do. But, I mean, you have limited options with one War Prism. It's over three times the army supply right now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> he's just, just he's, I mean, he's got a lot of stuff, man. The Prism is, like, a good idea, but... Is it going to hold enough units back? There's no way you can hold on to this third. No. There's I mean, not a way. The, yeah, the Zerg can defend everything the Classic has and basically kill this base off. And even though, you know, with Roaches alone and no Queens helping out, you can, you know, eventually kill everything that's over there. This is going to run this. Yeah, that's it. GG. Yeah. So Classic loses game one. Um, Ragnarok playing brilliantly. And let me tell you something. If Ragnarok wins this match, I think he's going to get out of this group. Yeah, this is supposed to be the hardest player in the group. It's classic. He's supposed to be well, the hardest player the in the hardest. tournament. Yeah. Because Maru's yeah. out, right? So Ragnarok looking very happy right now. Don't forget, he did win that group with TY and Special in it. Uh, Special is absolutely a top-level Terran right now as well. Um, so, yeah, that's like Ragnarok is on fire right now. He's playing right. very, very well. This is, you know, it, he's been really high on the ladder for quite some time. And I think he's starting to really show that. Like, last season, he had some really... He had games where it looked like he stepped on rakes and, you know, slid down an icy hill on his butt right. uh, into traffic where he got Set. hit by two cars that were going to hit each other anyways and he was <laughs> in the middle of them. But here, this season... <laughs> oh, that's good. I like how that starts out as some kind of Looney Tunes thing and then turns into just the absolute... <laughs> Total carnage, <laughs> something like that. <laughs> My God. He, he did too, man. He definitely had some games where he just got completely <laughs> owned. But he's playing so well. Yeah. You know, people can improve, really. Makers, classic. We have to, you know, accept that the old version of that player is no more. It looks like we're having that now with Ragnarok. <clears throat> yeah. Well, we'll see. I mean, if. If he proxies a hatch and dies a two link, two hatchling with three hatchling, then the old Ragnarok's still there yeah. too. Sci Storm Gaming, Ragnarok. <laughs> Call that multiple player disorder. <laughs> when your old terrible player self is in there with the, the new you, I have that in spades, tasteless. Oh <laughs> you're losing a set that you figured out how to stop six years ago. You're like, oh, what God. is this? Yep, yep. I feel like I learn the same things every week, Tasteless. Uh. Uh.
From Vancouver. My silver low GM, I love it. <laughs> My balance opinion is totally valid. That's a good sign right there. Yeah. Whew. <clears throat> this is already a great day at GSL. Yeah, this is it's going to be back. I'm just, like, so excited that he stomped that so hard that I think that Classic should be careful about immortal pushes. Right, from Israel. Ragnarok support here, too. I think a lot of people are excited to see Ragnarok do well. Uh, you know, I do occasionally get afraid um, that we're going to have exactly the same guys over and over without much of a change. You know, so seeing some players really rise to the top uh, and other players fall out is exactly... Frankly, it's what you need to have kind of a, a healthy scene, right? Yeah. We, well, we what we don't want it's is like Warcraft cool to see three from a long time ago. Exactly what I was going to say. Was it? Was it really what? Yeah, that was exactly yeah. what I was going to say. Yeah. So we don't want Warcraft. Warcraft three, three <laughs> pre, pre Starcraft two had the same yeah. like twelve guys at every tournament ever. Yeah, I don't know that it's still like that. I I haven't been following the scene I think too there's carefully, been... but I think there's more turnover now. But yeah, yeah, there was like. Way, way back, it was hilarious. It was like all the same players all the time. It, uh, you know what was even worse than that? It was Quake 3. Oh, yeah. You had four players that were always top four. Then you had four players that were always top eight. Yeah. And then you had eight players that were at all the other tournaments, yeah, too. Yeah. <laughs> it was just so... Oh, I and loved the, it. The I tournaments it, just but... rehashed themselves with the same results uh, over and over. Like, yeah, look at that. Even After another a while, third, you got that's super sick. Everybody's looking at each other saying, we should probably just end this, guys. We kind of know who's, <laughs> <laughs> who's going to be where. Oh, man. Okay, so a Stargate opener this time. Uh, Stargate, again, this went out of style somewhat recently, but uh, I think that, first off, it's a very decent map for it. Singing off with how uh, clinically Ragnarok destroyed that Immortal Sentry push. Classic should be very careful, because the thing is, that build has been so rampant uh, for the past, like, month-ish, that it's like, what all the Zergs are practicing against. So eventually they're going to figure it out. Eventually they're going to get good against it. You can tell that Ragnarok is. Now, um, having periods in a meta where there's pushes that come out and tend to dominate one race specifically, usually it's it's Zerg, uh, I think, throughout most of StarCraft, just coming out and, and crushing. Because mm -hmm. Zerg is kind of in this position where they're, they have the burden of having to grow and kind of react and, and swat away the other uh, race. Uh, and then eventually, you know, they can assert themselves. Uh, usually we'll see that work for a while and then get shut down kind of all at once, sometimes in the course of a week or two, mm -hmm. as these timing attacks People basically get out. collectively solved yeah, um, like, in, in the meta. And we, we might be having some of that in, in this week of GSL. Remember the two base charge all in? Oh, yeah. It won it was, like 10 games in a row in the GSL and then never yeah. won again. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, Robo coming up. It, uh, it looks like Oracle Phoenix uh, Oracle, but obviously this is not any sort of a mortal push. We'll see if a Twilight comes down next. Possibly an Archon drop coming up. Classic definitely adjusting play style here with a completely different approach. I think it's yeah. smart too, uh, even though as Artosis was saying, this isn't exactly like a, the build to do right now. Yeah. Uh, it was a while back. I think Classic gonna go back to something that worked before. Because I do think, despite the way that game went, Classic is probably still confident that if this game went, um, if, if, if you put these two players, their stats against each other, like their RPG characters or RPG armor, <laughs> weapons or whatever, yeah. Classic is supposed to be ahead. So he probably just wants to get to a place where he's got all the tech he needs and then he can try to play a normal game. Yeah, I think that it's a, uh, a reasonable idea, but uh, Ragnarok's macro has been really, really good. He was yep. known as a cheesy player since like 2015. Mm -hmm. And I mean, he still definitely has that within him. But yeah, if he, like the, the macro that he's shown us lately is enough, I think, to fight well as well. Oh, wow. That's a lot of drone kills. My god. <laughs> yeah, those oracles moving around that actually like synchronized swimming there. Mm. Uh, 11 drone kills. Now, so, it, it it's always, a very bloody pool at the end of that, though, yeah. with two of them dying, huh? <laughs> now, uh, he did lose two of those oracles, but he did, uh, while still keeping <gasps> one, he could try to tag the army there. Um, oh, I'm sorry, what are toses? Aspire. Oh, yeah, look at that. That's exciting. I was looking at the Protoss tech, they're going, what? Yeah, that's but, a really uh, great place to hide it, too. Now, we got the two adepts that are going to come in here. Now, keep in mind, if, if the, the Protoss is not ready for that Spire tech, you could be completely thrown off here. But Look so far, Classic is just great. Wow. Good handling, though, by Ragnarok. Yeah, seriously, because this was beautifully done, right? The second that you start the Adept Harassment, you bring in the uh, the Stasis Ward. Like, really well done. Beautiful shade. 
Wow. Okay, we've got a lot of wings out. The third base is done. And I don't think these links are going to be enough to do anything to that third base. You know, when you have the units wedged in, the, uh, the adepts wedged in the pylons there, they can't do much. But we really want to wait and see, you know, how much is going to come out of this Spire tech and is Classic going to be caught off guard with it. Did that be... Okay, the Phoenix yeah. just says not. That is hidden in such a way that unless you really... It's a great place. Uh, it, it's, it's funny because it's in the middle, right? It's actually an easy spot to scout, but because players on this map will rely so much on the edges. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the very corners of the map. Mm -hmm. Uh, it just hasn't been spotted. So Classic could absolutely be completely and totally caught off guard by this. There's eight mutas yeah. on the way. A lot of gateways coming down here. I don't believe there's actually cannons to defend against air anywhere there. Um, no, he's, so he's, he's just going to take some damage from this. There's no doubt. Okay. This is What a great move here from, from Ragnarok. I'm really yeah. excited about A very well-hidden tech. Yeah, and I kind of like the composition he's falling back on after this, okay, which the, is the Roach Bane. sees this. Sees the spire. He sees it now. But the mutas are already about halfway across the map. Now, there was one cannon making it at the natural. Don't worry, the immortal's going to defend. I know, I was looking at that saying, hmm. <laughs> and so this is going to be a lot of worker kills here. Yeah, it really looks like it. Of course, the Archon can't get through that wall. Right. So some nice, stalkers get warped in here. None of the mutas have actually been picked off yet. So this is a lot of worker kills. Now, there was already a Stargate, and there was already one Phoenix out. We saw the second one was just a... Just released there. Yeah. And so this is eventually going to be taken care of. But I got to say, this is a great way to trip up Classic. Yeah, that was very well done there by Ragnarok. 13 probes going down. Obviously, it's some lost mining time mixed in there. You have to make some defense. You're forced into a few Phoenixes that aren't going to really be all that useful. Oh, he's actually making some more mutas. I find that actually a little bit surprising. Yeah, huh. four more as well. I wonder what the idea is behind I'm that. I'm not sure, actually. Well, I mean, it's not that they're not useful. You can dive on a prism. You can set off immortal shields. Maybe you, uh, you pick off a sentry or something like that. Well, let's see. This push is coming up. It does look like a very scary push. Ragnarok yeah, does looks not have legit. that much. It does have some hydras on the way. This this base is gone. Yeah, see the queen leave, but she leaves her baby drones there. Yeah. My God. She's like, peace out, man. Yeah. No, you guys keep mine. It's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. So, yeah, I mean, how exactly are you going to stop this attack? I think that there wasn't a real follow-up plan here for Ragnarok. Uh, he's, he, the attack is really scary. Maybe at the top of ramps you'll be fine, though, uh, because yeah. it's hard for the Zalts to actually get up there and do but, their you know, damage. Three base versus three base now. Now, where, where are the Phoenixes? Are they with that main army? Uh, I saw one at the third base, but there's only two Phoenixes, I believe, so... Now, if you could get in oh, there... Oh, here they are. Right, they're right here. Oh, no, 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 those are hallucinations, so... Are you sure? Yeah. I don't have a detector, so I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so force field's coming down now. Now, again, if Protoss loses all that army, and the Mutas can actually use enough... Uh, excuse me, do enough damage to the workers, maybe there's a shot, but right now I think Protoss has the Zerg where he wants him. Well, there's no Psystorm yet, so there is the possibility of Ragnarok winning a fight here. If the Banelings actually connect on those Zealots, but Classic too smart. He's going to back up for now, which is yeah. just the perfect play. Now, here's the fourth base being taken. Ragnarok is going to move out. We really do need to watch for exactly where the Banelings connect because that's where, we're, you know, it's mm -hmm. the most easy way to decide who actually won the fight. Because um, if you don't connect anywhere, the Banelings are all killed off, then the Protoss' army is going to be better than the Zerg's army, and then the Protoss' yeah. army will win the game. Protoss' army is getting better and better with Psystorm on the way, plus two and more Immortals. Uh, uh, like Ragnarok, I like that he's really relying on Banelings here, though. You know, that's kind of a... Obviously, it's a little bit of a risk if, if they force field it off or hit some good Psystorms on it, but the, it gives you potential to roll through the army. Uh, Easily cleaned up the majority of those mutas. Yeah. Uh, there's not enough anymore that he can one-shot probes. We did see that happen earlier on. Ragnarok definitely in, in a position where he's actually fighting uphill. And, and once I, again, Classic moving out. Yeah, and I think Classic just wants to try to edge in here and pick a fight. If he can draw in some of the Banelings and shoot him down and force field him out, mm -hmm. um, I think he's done his job. He doesn't even have to try to kill this expansion. He just needs to get some fights that are... Definitely in his favor. But, you know, the number of Banelings that's out here is alarming for the Protoss. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, you almost got some good. If you have your screen in the wrong spot for a second, you can absolutely lose this fight to Protoss. The side storms are so scary, but it's a wide open area. The Banelings trying to roll through right now, but I mean they're rolling into Archons and Immortals, which makes it a bit harder. But the macro looking very strong here for Ragnarok, continuing to push forward. Some more zealots oh come down God. from the north. <laughs> oh, so sick. Uh, this is enough Hydras, he can actually drive the rest of this away. Seems like Classic's gonna try to hold his ground here. We have a lot more uh, Zealots warping in. Is this enough though? Lings and Roaches are coming in. Yeah. And he takes the warp for about a recall is happening, but I don't know how much he's actually gonna get back home. The fourth base, I think, can be toppled now. This is just amazing play from Ragnarok, but I gotta say, Classic chose the wrong place for an engagement. That was yeah, wide open ground. Was, That's exactly where Ragnarok wants to fight. That is, I think, the most open area he could have fought him in. Yeah, it, it was I mean, so... We would have to go into the map editor to make a new map that's only no terrain yeah. to have a more open area like for are, that army to fight against like Classic. Like those perfect hunter's maps in StarCraft One, Where someone's like, I fixed it, guys. The map is a piece of green paper. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we make it any color you want, though. You don't like yeah. green? No problem. <laughs> make it space style and call it Final Destination StarCraft version. Dude, God. some of those old maps where it's like, all right, I just got it. Let me just flatten it. Now, <clears throat> now the game is not over yet. This is still a very scary composition. Uh, but he's coming in here and he's trying to reduce this this unit set a little bit more. Like, he uh, eliminated a lot of the very strong units already, which is good. Look at that. Well, he's doing a great job targeting here with these Hydras. Let's see. Now, the Hydras are going to be driven away. Mm -hmm. The Banelings have been stunned here. But, you know, this angle, hold on. These Banelings are going to end up just running yeah. in here from behind. This is kind of a, we're going to have to stay in a wide shot to see how, where this exactly this goes. Oh, he's going after the High Templars right. there. Doesn't quite yeah. get him. But Might it, not end up working out. I think he actually fished him out far enough. Hold maybe, on. Maybe, maybe. Does force those uh, high tuplers to become an archon. Yeah, that's where the math gets a little bit fuzzy. You know, as much as Zerk dominated, um, you got to remember that the majority of that damage was in Banelings. So even though you see the Protoss mm -hmm. army completely decimated, you know, after that, the Zerk doesn't actually have that much. Yeah, and it, well, this is like a, a tricky situation because he's came from behind to win that last battle, uh, and then he took this battle, which I think was the right call. Because you think it was the right call for Ragnarok to attack that fort? Yes, yes, yeah, I agree. Uh, well, when you're playing Lingbane Hydra, you need to consistently trade it out for their tech units because Lingbane Hydra instantly is remade. There's like, you know, it's not like you're you you have a special Zerg robotics bay that needs to make four immortals for the next battle, right? You just you make it out of your larva. Whereas for the Protoss, it's like okay, well the High Templars are super heavy in gas, and then you have one or two Robos. So any time that you can trade out Lingbane Hydra for Immortals, for Archons, for High Templar, if you can reduce the complexity of the Protoss army, you're going to end up winning that game. But Classic with four bases, still looking pretty strong. Look at that army. That's a scary army right there. Yeah, he's got that Immortal count high enough. You know, Thank God for Classic, he actually was able to recall two of those Immortals back mm -hmm. uh, home because this is the, the key unit set that's actually really giving him uh, more muscle. I mean, the Archons as well, but... Really, just having that ability to sustain that is good. And I think taking this fifth base, notice how he's actually expanding in a funny way. He's taking that base instead of the other two possible locations you can expand to, specifically because he can defend both yes. that uh, his fourth base and try to take that fifth base, and it kind of covers everything. And that may be why we're seeing Ragnarok experiment with these little Ling Run buys. Is if he can fish the army uh, away far enough, Maybe he can try to take that fifth base out. Well, any time that he buys right now uh, is really good <gasps> for him because he's the one that's teching up, right? He's getting a bunch of Lurkers right now, which is kind of crazy Bartles. and exciting. Huh. We got Lurkers coming, and he's going to go into Broodlords uh, here. Yeah. This is yeah. a great idea to just try to push this because he's expanded in a very specific spot towards Zerg. I think Ragnarok is playing brilliantly. No, he's, he's playing a wonderful game, but it is a tough situation. Oh, the Observer's gone. Get out of here. All right, the Lurkers will hold that position, but this is obviously a very good warp in. <gasps> oh, he gets a prism. What? Nice. Three hero Hydras took care of that. Look no how problem. dumb those Zealots are. Oh, my yeah. God. All right, there's still one Observer over here. Okay, so he's going to clean this up, but I mean the... F Wait, is... Oh, I see where the Lurkers are burned. I got really confused there for a second. I'm like, are those burners third rising? Kill the other bases. No. They're being rotated back and forth. Adaptive Talons is about to finish. Wow. I'm getting chills, man. Ragnarok 
is playing just awesomely. Okay, some storms coming down here. Good micro trying to shuffle these yeah. back. Yeah, yeah. But you know, with this many immortals, a lot of times you can pound your way through all this defense. His, no most problem. of his shields are gone, Damn. though. I think if you don't have your shields, you've got to pull back. Uh oh Look at this. Is this him trying to make the square shape go through the circle hole? He's trying to make the immortal shape go through whatever the hell hole he wants. Okay, well, now we got lurkers coming and surrounding this. Oh, my God. Oh, my Classic God. Classic has, like, pushed his himself into isolation on the far right. I guess he's going to get the hatch, though. He's losing so many valuable units here. There is an, or, uh, an observer that's up there, so that's, like, really helping. It's too bad he couldn't somehow snipe that. But he backs up out of its range. Okay, it comes up now. Good transfuses on those lurkers, yeah, taking out the rest really. of the, uh, the meat there, those zealots. The drones need to get up here and body block, I feel like. He needs to keep those lurkers alive, but this might just be too much. Look at that, he even picks off the prism at this point. I tell you what, Classic wins this game. GG. But Ragnarok wins my heart. That was like, he got into a terrible spot and fought back really nicely. Yeah, in a weird way, Ragnarok is seeming like the better player. Although I will say, I really like how Classic expanded and took that fifth. In a yeah. weird location, it looks wrong. In some ways, it is kind of wrong, but not in that specific game. Oh, that was he great, said, man. oh, the only way that the Zerk can win is if they have everything in one spot, so I'm going to expand awkwardly out and towards the middle of the map, mm -hmm. which Protosses tend to not do. You know, you're normally trying to hug those little nook expansions on the edge. But Ragnarok, he held off that attack. He almost toppled the fourth base in the counter. And I'll tell you what, that was not an easy push for Classic to close that game out at no. all. No, it wasn't. The, uh, the uh, Lurkers did phenomenal work there. Uh, Really, really an exciting game, an exciting series. We're going to Kairos Junction for map number three. And I tell you what, as of right now, I have no idea who's going to win this. Ragnarok absolutely looks like he's on Classic's level. Okay, game three is now loading up. Classic versus Ragnarok. Uh, as we start things off here in group A in the round of 16, the winner will go to the winner's match, the loser. We'll have a chance to redeem themselves, um, and our game is now loading up. Let's do this classic versus Ragnarok. Game is starting. Makers Classic. Yeah, he, he definitely played very solidly that game, the exception of one attack. Psy Storm Gaming, Ragnarok. Ragnarok, you know, he's using some new tech moves. He's, he's uh, making some great plays. Didn't work out that game, but right now for me, I think he's getting out of this group. Yeah, I think so. I mean, he's looking really impressive. Yeah. He seems like he's finally caught his stride. Really? He's, you know, against basically the strongest player that's in the GSL. Ragnarok is absolutely holding his own. Yeah. Taking a lead and then keeping it, and when he's behind, really fighting an uphill yeah. match yeah. And, and making it tough. That's so true. Welcome, guys. <clears throat> uh, you know, he, he had a, a nice I am Katowice. He, his season one of GSL was not so nice, but... Obviously, uh, round one he did well in. Now he's showing his ZVP is very up to date. He's got his own little flair to it. I love it. I'm excited to see what he goes for here. Uh, but, it, you know, more more so it's like, what is Classic going to do and how does Ragnarok deal with that? Right. Yeah, we got to see, is it going to be the Robotech, the Stargate tech? There's so many different... Uh, iterations of those two techs as well, or we might see something, you know, a, a third alternative tech here too. But um, it's interesting to see that Classic went back for the uh, Stargate play, getting a, a handful of Oracles, uh, yeah. as, lo along, uh, as well as the one Phoenix, and then basically playing a, a pretty standard game. You're not really trying to do anything crazy, and then eventually pushed out and uh, you know did a pretty decent job. Whereas in game two, he tried to play the hyper modern mm -hmm. push style. And that was totally shut down by Ragnarok. Ragnarok definitely seeming to be prepared against the way Protosses are playing currently. Yeah. But yeah. that's it's smart. You know, a lot of times if you're playing against somebody who seems to be really solid in the current meta, you can bring out something old. Yeah. 
Uh, and the thing is, it's not that Stargate's bad. It's just that no. we now have this aggressive option in the Immortal Century play. But uh, maybe the time on that strategy is beginning to run out. We're going to have to see. And we've seen this in much more dramatic forms where we'll have players who've come back from a long time ago, a long time of retirement, whether it's StarCraft 2 or StarCraft 1, and then uh, use their older play style against a, a very top tier modern player. And the modern player, is, is, he doesn't even play against this really. Yeah. <laughs> and it works. It, it's a kind of a funny situation. Um, so we have the Twilight Council coming here now. There's one Phoenix as well. Uh, it feels like it might be a Glaives build. But it doesn't have to be. Let's let's see what else he puts well, he, down here. Yeah, is he gonna get a ton of gateways? Yeah, it could be charge, it could be glaives. Yeah, it seems like it's going towards one of those two. Yeah. Glaives, yeah. Uh, okay. I mean, not a bad build to bust out. Definitely, you have potential for lots of damage. There's no way that this overlord will end up scouting it. I wonder if this is in a weird way. The obvious thing to do if you're a top tier Protoss, just stay with me on this, okay? Okay. You have your three different builds because you're a Protoss, you have to mix it up, right? Okay. A Robo build, there's a Star uh, Gate build, and then in game two, you do at least opening with a Stargate build so it looks like it tracks on a game two build, but actually it's going to be some kind of tempo build where you try to uh, overwhelm them with adapts. Yeah, he, well, he's making a robo, and we haven't seen more gates, so I wonder if it's just going to be a three-gate pressure into, like, a mortal in third base. Uh, obviously, point. with the extra two gases, he can start stockpiling sentries and just do adept harassment into an adept uh, it's very sentry true, very true. mortal push. The thing is, he only bought the Phoenix, so already Ragnarok should know that something's up. And for Ragnarok here, we have the Roach War at about halfway done, 20 more lings coming out. And I think you might be right, Artosis. It seems like this is not going to be what I was looking at it as, is some kind of uh, game where you try to smother them you know, with adepts. Well, that smothering will come later with the help of some other units, I think. But yeah, this is yeah. a, it's a solid surround. Good unit splitting yeah, no here, I would say, No time to really overall. recall there. So the adepts have breached the main here. They're getting low in numbers, though. There's about to be only two remaining. There's Last Shade here, I don't know if it's going to be able to finish for any of them as know. the rest of these Adepts are going to go down. Meanwhile, two up here. There you go. Uh, and this is where, you know, you know, you just need it to work in one location. <laughs> yeah. You need it to just get to a point where there's nothing depending on one spot, and suddenly four or five drones are killed, and then you can start to shade in and out in different spots. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, he, he definitely did some damage with that. Uh, Roach is on the way. Okay, now Ragnarok knows exactly what's coming. Uh, let's see. Let's see if he can hold it. He's sitting here on 45 workers. He already lost 30 lings uh, to the initial adepts. So the but only five drones so far. Now going to be a little bit more. Important. The idea with with this specific build is you come in with a certain number of adepts. It, can, it still masks what, how committed you're going to be in the future to do yeah. an attack like this. But you try to kill some drones, and and you're basically crippling the Zerg to a certain extent. Um, as they have to remake drones, uh, you know, debate whether or not it's safe to take a fourth. Mm -hmm. And from here, the real punch comes. And it's going to happen as this War Prism is going to come out here. Yeah. Um, now, a couple things we want to watch for. And this has been a big theme here in uh, especially uh, these PVZ pushes. A, does the Protoss keep the War Prism alive? Um, now, it's not difficult to keep that alive, but you, in order to be warping it at the same time and juggling, that's another story. And so some players like Deer have actually stayed very far back uh, and opted to not have anywhere near as much juggles, but have the right angle of attack and then bring the War Prism in later on. Look at this, he actually gets on top of everything. He brings in the Link Plank and then skips it. Oh, those were really that good force sick. fields right there. Wow. Really great force fields. My god. Yeah. That was a lot of units that died right there. And Ragnarok started that engagement in a way that looked really good, and then it, it went south. Note how he's keeping that back. He doesn't want the Ravagers to just shoot that out of the sky. He's going to come in now. Now we need to see where the warp, uh, the, excuse me, the force fields come down here on. And you know, he's given himself enough room, he can actually arc back out. So as the Roaches and Ravagers uh, attack in, he can even pull away. Yeah, he's got a lot of units coming out right now, but I don't think that he's going to be able to quite hold this, right? That's a lot of adepts in there. He's continually you know, warping in. Well, the Immortals are also spaced really nicely. Yeah. And you notice he pulled that lower Immortal over there to make sure it's hitting Roaches and Ravagers. And look at it. None of the Biles are connecting. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's going to win very this. little extra damage out of these Ravagers, unfortunately. 
If, if he could hit some great vials, maybe, but the army is just getting a bit smaller here for Ragnarok, and it doesn't seem like it's going to get any better. Classic, once again, reasserts why he is the most feared player in this GSL Code S. And, you know, the two Immortals, specifically, he had to make sure they stayed alive with the War Prism, and no problemo. Even that last uh, Corrosive Vial, I think after the game's already been won, he dodges that, too. Yeah, this was a good mix-up. Uh, you know, the, the one Phoenix to stop scouting and, and check out what's going on into the three gate Glaive the Depths into the follow-up push. Uh, all that stuff really worked together, because when Ragnarok uh, wasn't harassed as heavily in another Immortal push game, he really stomped it. But here, taking a bit too much damage, losing a few too many units, and unable to hold on when the final push comes from Classic. That was awesome. Okay, so Classic actually wins in game three, so he's going to be in the winner's match. We kind of expected, but not, not kind of, we really did ex expect him to have a result like that. But what's also exciting about this is that Ragnarok really held his own, especially yeah. game one and two. Those are great games. Yeah. And um, I think he's still got a shot to get out of this group. But for now, Ragnarok sinks into the loser's match where it will be a battle of survival. Coming up next is Hurricane vs. Fantasy, and we'll be going to that after this short break. Was only pain before